Hello everybody. Uh, this is the um, lilac wisteria and uh, that's been going up this cane and it's thrown out one side shoot which has gone across to the side of the, the bench there. The rest of it has just gone up and up and up on a single stalk and uh, uh, to the top of the cane which was a 10 foot cane and then it's gone across a piece of string I put to the corner of the house and started back uh, where unfortunately I tried to get it to go to a second piece of string and uh, snapped the growing tip off but um, yeah so it's put on a huge amount of growth and now mid-August is the time to cut it back so uh, I do want it to flower but I also want to, some structure uh, in this tree so I'm gonna have to get my snippers out and cut it back okay so I'm gonna start by removing this or section of this long um, and what they say is to go back about four or five buds and then just cut it back and then next year we'll cut it back a little more um, how well you can be able to see that this cane is being held in place uh, by a metal contraption that I've actually screwed the bench. Let's move the camera around slightly. And look at these leaves. So I'm going to have to undo all that before I can move this tree and get the cane out. But I can just unwire this. Um, unfortunately, the wire has cut in. But I'm not too bothered as I probably won't keep this piece anyway once it's flowered. Um, it doesn't cut in too terribly. That's better. So, okay. So from the original top of the tree, this was the original top of the tree. Um, this will be my new leader or is my new leader I'm talking nonsense but never mind um, I'm going to go up to the six buds to here and I'm going to cut it off okay so I might you can so I'm told take a piece like this Scrape away the bottom bark like so. Put that in to a piece of compost, a piece of compost, a popular compost. I might scrape that some more. Um, and they'll root and you'll have a young wisteria. I might try a few of those. Um, somehow I'm going to pull this cane out and there we go okay so that is pretty much all I'm going to do for this wisteria this year um, we'll come back to it in the springtime and hopefully it's in flower and uh, look at some more work we need to do to it then. Okay, so we've got some nice taper down here at the base. It's not going to show up very well on the camera. Uh, some reasonable taper down here at the base and some interesting movement. Um, as I say, I think I will lose this whole piece after it's flowered and started growing our top from this piece somewhere so we will now go and look at the uh, white flowered 
Bunggi sama Alba. Okay now, so as I said, uh, it is fairly easy to take wisteria cuttings, or so I'm told. You don't need any particular hormone um, rooting powder or anything. It's just scrape away some of the cambium layer and uh, pop it in. Now what I'm using here is um, 10 parts kitty litter to um, five parts potting grit. So a mixture of two to one, um, ratio of two to one. And uh, I find that works quite well for most cuttings. What's nice is when it does root, um, and you go to pot it on, um, the roots can actually come away cleanly and uh, without damaging the roots, which allows you to um, pot it on into a, a new pot quite easily without um, the plant suffering too much trauma. So yes, yeah, so I'm just cutting. Uh, I think these are called internodal cuttings, I believe. And uh, just removing some of this leaf area so that um, it doesn't transpire too much and I'm just going to pop pop them into the soil like so and we will see it's easier to do it with the scissors um, and we will see whether I get any extra plants out of this or not Possibly not. Um, if you had a 10% success rate taking cuttings, um, that would be for every 10 cuttings you take, you have one plant. 10% uh, doesn't sound brilliant, but a plant's a plant. Um, you think this plant cost me 20 pounds so if I get one plant out of it, one new plant out of it you know, that's a 20 pound plant conceivably it's one way of looking at it you know. not terribly interested in monetizing plants although I do sometimes refer to my collection as my retirement fund um, One day I'm going to have to get rid of them and uh, sell them all off. Assuming anyone would want them. Okay, so that's one row. Shake your hands. Hungry, I think. Okay, that's one row done. Um, you can do them also in a deeper pot in the traditional way of cutting just below a leaf node and um, inserting them. I thought this is a more successful way by a chap down at the garden centre. Um, so. I'm going with this way, but you can do whatever suits you. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off as you get the picture and um, carry on. Okay, so um, I actually got 20 cuttings there, so if I get me 10%, that'll give me two plants. Um, and I've also heard that uh, if you take the growing tips, and um, stand them in a glass of water uh, they will root so I'm going to try that with these um, these two pieces and we will see how that goes okay I'm going to tackle the large white wisteria next um, 
think I'm going to get many cuttings. It hasn't grown as well, but uh, get that sorted and um, onward with that. Okay, so here's where the uh, the white wisteria has been sitting all summer um, by the pond in its little tray of water, um, and it's taken an awful long time to actually get going. Um, and it is only now beginning to shoot out some some long tendrils, uh, very uh, unvigorous in comparison to the other tree. Um, which makes me wonder if there isn't something going on with the roots and uh, I only bought this tree this year I've no idea what the roots are like in this pot and I wouldn't normally want to do a repotting in the middle of August uh, but I think I'm going to just for my own peace of mind I've lost plants that I've brought into vine weevil before and uh, I may be worrying about nothing but I'd rather take that chance. Um, not got any holidays or anything coming up so I'm going to be home to mollycoddle this tree and hopefully get it through. Okay so I've been out and uh, I've purchased this pot which I'm quite pleased with. Um, it's guaranteed frostproof frost proof and guaranteed for 10 years. Um, the only drawback with it is it doesn't have any feet, but uh, I'm sure I can find just a couple bits of wood or something um, that I can stand this on just to give it a bit of an air gap underneath. Uh, or indeed, um, as wisteria like to stand uh, with their pots in water over the summer, um, you know, a bit of a water gap. I've uh, prepared the inside with a single piece of screen um, rather than three over it's, it's got three large drainage holes um, but I get big sheets of this stuff A4 size sheets um, and it's relatively cheap so just cut out a big square to cover all three holes um, and yeah so now it's just going to be a question of getting the wisteria out of its original pot Having a bit of an investigation um, into the root ball, hopefully make sure there's no creepy crawlies and nasties in there, um, and just remove enough to get it into this pot. So let's do that next. Okay, just before we um, start working on the roots, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I have an extension growth here, but it's only. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buds long, um, barely a foot. And as we go further up to the tree, uh, two, three buds, uh, one, two, three, four, five buds there at the very top. So it was beginning to grow away, but it hasn't grown away with anything like the um, strength and vigor of the lilac wisteria. Um, and yet, from all accounts, this is supposed to be a very vigorous tree. So, um, also, we've got some of this discoloration, a few of the leaves. So, hence, I'm going to repot it at this time of the year. And I'm actually going to shorten it slightly. Um, which will remove some of the burden of the leaves that are actually shooting. Um, hopefully make it shoot again. I don't want to make it too short. Um, because, reputedly... Uh, this particular species of wisteria, the flowers can be literally two feet or 60 centimeters long, so you know, I don't want them dragging on the floor. So, anyway, let's start working on these roots. Okay, let's see if I can get this thing out of its pot. Yes, okay, boy, well, easily enough. Um, Strangely, it's got a layer of soil in the bottom um, with no root in sight. I think it's a layer of soil that would have been uh, completely waterlogged standing in the tray of water as it was. So maybe it didn't like that after all. So, 
I'm quite liking this root pace. This leaf's just in the way, isn't it? Typical. Let's move that around a little bit. Um, yeah, so it's obviously going to have to come down. In, this root ball's absolutely going to have to come down in height to be able to get into this new pot. So I'm going to start working away some of the soil at the top. I'm not going to put this tree into bonsai soil. Um, research I've done on the internet says that wisteria don't thrive very well in the bonsai soil and they do better in a, a firmer, more regular compost. So I'm going to put this back into the compost it's in, um, provided I don't find any critters in there. Thought I saw something unwanted then, but uh, no, just another piece of grit and gravel. So these aren't my best um, side branch cutters. These are an old pair that I picked specifically for removing larger roots when I root root pyramid. So don't need to worry about that. Okay, so I'm looking at this as kind of my front of this tree and um, it gives a fairly good root flare, although this root's a bit odd, but eventually it might just fuse in together into one piece. Um, Okay, I think that'll probably do it. I'm feeling much happier that uh, there's not much of a problem with the roots. Maybe it's just getting off to a slow start. Um, who knows what happened to it in the nursery before I got it. Okay, so turn the camera off get rid of all this and then we can start looking at getting it in the pot. Got the tree nicely in the centre of the pot and got it wired in fairly securely. One of the beauties of a round pot um, is you can put the tree in the centre and you don't really need to worry too much about which is a front. Um, of course it does actually mean that you need to make sure that your tree is attractive from all sides and not just one side. Um, so, you know, there's that to consider. So I'm refilling back with the original soil with a little bit of fresh compost mixed in. Um, There we have it. Um, I think the pot is rather nice and I think the tree will look quite nice in it. Um, as I say, I think this is my front for the time being. Um, not happy with this kind of T-bar 
thing going on at the moment, but um, I'm going to leave it for this year just to see how the flowers go and then remove it next year. But for now, I need to make a decision about where my new top is going to be. And um, it's got quite a lot of nice movement. I don't like this straight piece up here. Um, let me see if I can't move the camera's position for Okay, so we have quite an uninteresting uh, piece just here. With a bit of growth on it, not a huge amount. Um, I'm going to cut this top piece off and have this as my new apex, is what I'm thinking at the moment. And uh, the only tools I have with me are root pruning tools, so I'm going to have to go and get think better to um, cut that back but just go through my reasoning I just think it's a better height and may give me a bit more taper um, and perhaps a bit of back budding and hopefully some more flower I mean I've got lots of little shoots coming out just now just starting so we'll see how we go with them um, they'll help build up a framework at the top here if nothing else and um, Let's see where we go from there. Okay, so here we go. Um, move this little piece of wire that's been holding it to this cane. And uh, I'm going to move that just down a bit because the tree is trying to go over. This isn't, I made sure this isn't cutting in in any way. Um, come on. That's better, I'll just hold it in place. And then I'm just going to snip the top. So we can say bye to that piece. Mm. Okay. So, I'm going to lose this piece that's coming off there. And that leaves this piece as a new leader, which I'm going to shorten slightly. Oh, I'll cut it back to a couple of buds, as they say, for flowering. Um, I'm going to sneeze, I can feel it. I may even in the, f even oh, in the future um, come down to this level as a new top, but for now I'm happy with that. So I'm going to shorten these growths there and there. And uh, bring the camera down slightly. Okay, so we have quite a long growth here. I say long, nothing compared to the length of the, the growth we had on the lilac wisteria, but uh, I'm going to shorten it back to one, two, three, five buds. Um, and these others down here, uh, I'm just going to take out the growing tip. Like so. Um, I'm just going to remove, uh, remove some of those leaves so you can see what I'm doing. Um, we've only got four or five buds of new growth, so I'm just going to remove the growing tip, like so, and. Uh, Maybe that might even produce a bit, little bit of back budding and then um, maybe if I'm lucky I'll get some flower off those and we'll get some new shoots. So yeah, just cutting round, cutting off all the terminal buds of these short growths. Uh, 
that in shot vaguely. So just cutting off the terminal apex there. And there. And there. And indeed there. Okay, so um, nothing there really for me to try and take cuttings with, although I might try and root that little piece. And a couple of these tip cuttings. And that's about all the work I'm going to do on this tree in the summer. Um, let's turn it around slightly. There's another. Goes there, we'll cut the terminal bud off. I think that's all the work I'm going to do on this for this year and uh, we'll come back and look at this tree in February. Let me see if we can move the camera back a little bit so you can see it in all its glory. Bring it back round to the front. And there we go, a little shorter and uh, a little more shapely for it, I think. And we'll revisit this tree back in February. Thank you for watching. Please take care of yourselves. <laughs>